hello. Happy Friday, everyone. How's everyone doing? How is everyone doing? It is Friday afternoon for me. Might be Friday night for you. Might be Friday afternoon. Hell, it might be Saturday. I don't know how time zones work, but it is Friday. That's right. Second stream of the week. Uh, we still have one tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I. This build's gonna take longer than the uh, the minion, which is chilling back here. So I figure, why not? Uh, why not do another build for the week? Let's let's just sneak in one more um, build for the week, just to get us a little bit further ahead in the build. We got we still got a lot to do. Um, we still have a lot to do uh, with the V two. So uh, just to get things started, um, because why not? Who likes prizes? Who wants to win something? Uh, cheers to Jason for setting this up at the last minute. Well, technically it's not the last minute. I was supposed to do it last week, but I forgot. But, uh... You guys want to win one of these? You guys... Does anyone here, like... I don't think many of you do, but does anyone want to win um, a full V2 kit? Like, I, I think some people might. I'm not 100% sure. You do? Okay, that's good. Um, not tonight. But when this is done, we'll give one away. But tonight, we'll give away some motors. So, if... If... Let me open responses here. Make sure I have it set up right. Yeah. So, if you want to win a set of V2.4 LDO motors... Motors. So, the actual, you know... A box of these guys... Um, enter this draw here. So let me uh, pin that there. So, if you want to win a set of LDO motors, motors, LDO motors, motors, yeah, LDO motors, motors. If you want to win a set of seven motors for V2.4, uh, enter that draw there. So let me add that to the description here because that was the last minute. Um, sorry, things are a little somewhat scuffed right now. Um, because my power went out last night and I didn't realize it and it was out for a couple hours so my home server shut down and everything and I had to reboot everything just before stream. So. And by the way, uh, that's open worldwide. So if you want to win, I have a UPS, but when the power's out for several hours, um, the power's out for several hours. UPSs usually don't last that long. No, so how I'm gonna do the draws for this, I know some like doing it where you have to be present to win. Um, I know because I have such a, a worldwide audience um, and it gets late in some countries pretty early for me, I don't like doing that because some people got to go to bed. Um, so how I do the draws is you have to be here during the stream to enter. Okay. So for every V2 stream going forward, we're going to give something away until we give away a full kit. Um, so to enter, you have to be here during the stream to enter, but you don't have to be present at the end of the stream to enter. So right now the draw is going to be 7 p.m but I might push it back. So if you want a guarantee entry, you have to enter before seven. If you want to roll the dice, you can enter after seven because it'll be basically whenever I end the stream, I'll do the draw. So we'll do that. Um, put whatever name, because I'm just going to take your name and email for it to Jason and he'll collect all your info because I don't know what, I don't want to know where you live. Somebody donated, I missed that. Uh, 3D Printing Freak, uh, five euro. Thank you, appreciate it. Coffee to start this off. I got G Fuel, man. I don't need coffee. Plus, I haven't had a chance to go out and get coffee. Right now, it's 4 p.m. where I'm at. So, what were we doing? We are building the V2. And then, uh, what else? So, um, next week, so Saturday, tomorrow, um, is Minion stuff. Next Tuesday is back on this. And then, hopefully, next Friday is Minion. Unless something else comes up. Um, the reason I didn't... I think I, spent, I said last Saturday we we're going to do Minion tonight. Um... I have to still figure out the electronics on it and 
I legit think we only have one more stream of mechanicals on it, and I won't be able to figure out the electronics before tomorrow. So we'll do the minion tomorrow, that way I got all next week to figure out the electronics. So... Where are we at in the manual? Where are we at in the manual? Oh yeah, I gotta turn you guys back on. Do I have you guys on? No, I gotta add you guys. There you guys. Nope, that's BRB. There you guys are. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? And you're there. Okay, good. This is what happens when I record a video. I gotta turn off all my overlays and then I always forget to turn them back on. So, um, I think there's been a revision to the manual since then. Oh, by the way, R2 in the next week. So you can stop asking me. It'll be in the next week or so, roughly. Just put a name, whatever, put your name, YouTube name, whatever you're comfortable with, because I'm just gonna take your name and email, send it to Jason, and then Jason's gonna contact you to actually send out the prizes. Because I don't wanna know where you live. Uh, it's an optional color. There, you, LDO does multiple different colors. This is space gray, so. So where do we leave off at? We left off, we had our Z drives all installed. And now we're on to the idlers. Which, uh, as you can see, they have eyebrows um, because they're idlers. So we're going to need some printed parts here. Oh no! So first off, let's get rid of the skirts, because I'm not going to need those this screen. Million printed parts. Million printed parts. What is the manual from? It's the 2.4 R2 manual. 2.4 R2, which is the version of the 2.4, is the newest revision. R2, revision 2. Um, will be out in the next week or so. Did I find the missing Z part? I did not. The little guy took it and it is gone. Now, do I know for sure the little guy took it? No, I don't. I'm just assuming he took it because he has a habit of doing that. He's a, he's a little thief. Switch wire can hold the parts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go. And then I also need... Uh, again, if you see this little boron heart here, that means it's an accent part, for those that don't know. So I'm going to need M3 nuts, M316s, that, and idlers. Okay, so fasteners. Ooh, Mark. Uh, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, when is R2 coming out? R2... Oh, I gotta move the camera. One second. Uh, R2... There we go. Uh, should be in the next week or so. Roughly. Hopefully. We'll see. Motion, which... I'm gonna need that. And I got some... Idlers in there. Stuff. Cable kit. Belts, chains, and bands, electronics, fasteners. Uh, just to clarify, using blockers to skip ads and such is illegal. It is illegal, but I do it. I'm not your mama. I'm not your conscience. I'm not Linus. It, it's it's like jaywalking. Yes. It technically is a crime, but, you know, most people don't get in trouble for it. Uh, there will be a whole list of changes with R2, uh, but the TLDR is a lot of bug fixes and updates to the printed parts uh, to make putting the printer together a little bit easier, uh, make things a little bit easier to print. Lots of little tweaks. Pretty much every part has been changed in some ways. A lot of it is just kind of like um, how the holes are printed. Um, they We use the method now that Prusa uses where you have that like cross pattern to, to give it support for holes. 
uh, versus using taper that we used before. Um, the Z drives have a bunch of changes to them and tweaks, uh, especially with the new feet. And then we have the gantries all new because it's the uh, basically the Trident gantry now, and a bunch of other stuff. It, it, it's it's a revision. It's not a full update. It's not 2.5. It's just updates to 2.4. So if you've already built a 2.4, will upgrading, you know, swapping everything over change much? And eh, not really. But if you're going to build new, I'd recommend go new. And then M530s. There we go. And what else was it? Idlers? Yeah, so we got the 22 to 9 mil. Okay. Echo 2 Papa 2. I know Jason Ted 2 draws, but I was going to make a thing of it where I was going to draw one and then be like, hey, let's do another one. But yes, it's it's two kits. But for those that missed the intro of the stream, it's going to be a surprise that it's two kits. So, uh, screwdriver. Point four is a lie. MKS Monster Eight. I don't know. Does anyone have a Monster Eight yet? I know a few people on the team looked into getting one just to play with it, but I don't know. So overhead, zoom in, Maybe over here. There we go. He's gonna focus on that frame. There we go. Focus on me. So, do I get more from Patreon or YouTube? Technically Patreon, but YouTube's easier to deal with um, when it comes to like doing community stuff. Because I. I Next week, there will be a members-only stream, uh, maybe on the Thursday for a couple hours. Um, I don't know the exact time yet. I'll let you know. Does R2 use the Trident PCB DIN clamps? Uh, they are way better. Um, if you're curious what we use on 2.4 R2, it's this. So it uses DIN. So that is now part of 2.4, which... Um, Here's a CAD if you want to know what the 2.4 CAD looks like. And uh, thank you for the 10, Jeff. So we're taking our M3s here. And we're, uh, as you can see, we're putting the M3 in the idler part. And then the M360 in the uh, accent part. Craig, thank you for coming to member. Uh, would you consider a user mod? Um, my whole thinking is if you only have one printer, don't mod it. Or at least don't try and convert it. Um, oops, I already have one in there. Thank you. Um, I, would, I would start fresh. I, I'm really of the opinion that modding I, I'd rather just build a printer from scratch than mod something I'd rather get the satisfaction of, of knowing I did the whole thing myself um, and not have to worry about you know not only did I build the printer myself now I have to deal with creality quality control for whatever parts are still creality so uh, Greg two pounds thank you appreciate it like that smash button and donate to this man. Uh, I'm just reading them. Uh, Ricky B 20 thank you, appreciate it. I wanted to build a Voron 2.4 and don't print ABS, use the source list, or is there a kit that includes everything for a complete build? I want the best Voron I could build, 350. Um, in terms of kits, um, okay, I I haven't built a full 2.4 kit from any vendor yet. I'm in the process of building an LDO, but based off my experience with LDO in the past, this is probably the best kit you can get, is the LDO. As for the printed parts, if you can't print uh, ABS parts, look into the PIF program. Uh, printed Ford. Um, go on the Voron Discord. Check out Printed Ford. It's basically people who have Vorons that are willing to sell you printed parts for a very reasonable cost. Uh, and all the parts are printed on Vorons. So. Two. 
three, four. Yeah, there, remember, there's also no official conversion, too, for the Ender 3 to Switchwire. It's uh, just a mod. So you're at the mercy of whoever designed the mod. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying we, we test stuff for months before we release it. So, so we put the, uh, the M316 in the accent part. It goes in there. And you basically just kind of want to get it started. You don't want to completely screw it in there because you're going to need some adjustment. Renee, Renee Doctor? Renee Doctor, 10 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, what Greg said? Yes. What did Greg say? <laughs> now, this is how you tension your Z belts. You have these, uh, these are adjustable, and these are how you tension your Z. And again, they are called idlers because they have eyes. Uh, the aluminum parts. Oh yeah, if you guys are talking about aluminum parts, so what a lot, there's a bunch of vendors on AliExpress that are making aluminum parts, and most of them are just taking the CAD for the STLs and just machining those, which uh, is a complete waste. Um, talk to anyone who actually has machining experience. You can go about making a, mach a metal Voron a heck of a lot easier than just machining the... Uh... I'm going to laugh when they go to machine one of these. That is going to be uh, hilarious to watch them machine that and have it come out functional. It can be done, but it's going to be expensive. M530. But yeah, the, uh, the printer wasn't designed with metal parts in mind. Uh, certain parts are designed to flex. Um, it also adds a lot of weight to your gantry. And I know somebody on the team who has a metal parts Voron, and he can barely tell the difference in print quality. So, in terms of, like, printed parts. Uh, dude, you need to keep the beard brush. You are now on 14. Keep up the good content. I do have a... I, I did start oiling it, so... Okay. So, uh, there's two sets of these, okay? Um... Basically, because they're opposite corners, you have a two sets. So you're going to have mirrored parts like this. So see how the tabs are different? Basically, you, you want the screw coming in from the side without the tab on all of them. That way it looks even because, you know, appearances are critical. And yes, you are screwing into plastic. That's not an issue here. my music go? Did the music die? Where'd the music go? Music? Did the music die on you guys? Or did I push something? You have music, then where'd my music go? No. Oh. Okay. Never mind. It just suddenly my computer decided to drop the volume way down. Uh, the screwdriver, it's an ES126. Comments are dead on the screen. No, it's, it's updating. Main overlay. Refresh from cache. So yeah, so when it comes to screwing these in, uh, yes, you are screwing into plastic, but the force is all this way down, not side to side. So you're just screwing it into plastic just to keep it from moving and backing itself out. And yes, it will float a little bit. You are going to have a little bit of float in here, that's by design. It allows it to compensate a little bit if you run into issues. So don't go putting shims in there. 
Any thoughts on the CAN bus mod? Um, I haven't used a CAN board yet. I know a bunch of people have. Um, the issue is, is I I'm just waiting for it to mature so we have better tool head boards. Um, well, not better, just more uh, thoroughly tested. Like stuff's still a lot in development. Like there's always a lot of changes I'm seeing with them. I'm just waiting for it to mature a bit before I go down that road. Uh, Steven, New Zealand, $2. Idler. Yes, it's an idler. That's why it has eyebrows. And it's all because I drew a shitty MS Paint drawing way back in the uh, the early days of 2.4. Or was it 2.4? It was it 2.2? I don't know. It was like when this design first came around, I just I put angry eyebrows on it in MS Paint and I wrote Nom Nom GT2 belt or something like that. And then Max put the eyebrows actually in the CAD and now we have idlers. And by the way, screwing into plastic, literally as soon as the button head touches flat, you're done. You don't need to torque it or anything. Which ABS brand works on an open printer? Uh, usually you, you'll have better luck with ABS pluses. So eSun ABS plus works okay. I've done Sparta ABS plus. Um, just look for ABS plus and you still wanna print with like a draft shield um, or put the printer in a closet even, or put a cardboard box around it. Just because you can print some ABSs out in the open, ABSs, the hotter it is, the warmer the ambient temperature, the better result you'll get out of it. And you naturally want the best result. So. Any other Easter eggs? Um, you guys have seen the Sanjay, right? Um, in, the, in the Revo Voron tool head, um, for the stealth burner um, and a little Sanjay image that's from uh, Pooch uh, did that from the uh, which you can see it right there the plaque so we have that and I think there's a couple others and now we're going to put our idlers in so idler orientation mind the idler orientation the idler must face in the same orientation as the pulley in the drive below it. So, when you look down this hole, you'll see a nine millimeter 20 tooth. Focus on me, focus on me, come on, focus. Focus on me. Now oh, it's gonna focus on the frame. Either way, when you look down that hole, you're gonna see a nine millimeter uh, 20 tooth gear. This one has to line up with it. So it should be like that. If it's like this, you're wrong. We're gonna need some T nuts M5. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, and then M330s again. Thoughts on PETG versus ASA ABS? Don't print a Voron in PETG. I've yet to see one not fail. So, fortunately, guys probably won't get the best view for this but we are installing them up there and the uh let's go mobile ow I smashed my elbow funny bone right into that crossbar that hurt. Ah, my hand's all tingling now. Smash that elbow button. Exactly. Steve builds. Hey, Steve. Call the ambulance. Ah, uh, I'll live. I think, maybe. Okay. 
So I just got them in there started. So now I could slide it into position. And there's little tabs here and these actually keep the beams from rotating. So you would think when you put tension on here, it's gonna cause this extrusion to rotate. Uh, this little tab locks it into this extrusion, which prevents it. So slide it right into the corner. And then you're gonna, you're gonna snug it up, but don't actually tighten it. So basically just go until the, the button heads, you know, touch the plastic. Because when you adjust this M3 screw here, this moves up and down, okay? So that's how you're gonna tension your Z belt. So you're gonna, you're gonna go in there with a button head, or a button head, a ball head Allen key. After you put your belts in, you're gonna adjust that screw up or down to tension your Z belts. And then once your Z belts are tensioned, you're gonna tighten these two screws to lock everything down. And then that's how uh, the Z idlers work. Easy peasy. Everyone say hi, Steve. If you have not said hi, Steve. Yeah, a cardboard box on your Ender 3 is enough to get it uh, to print ABS. You, if you go on YouTube, there is uh, quite a lot of people in the YouTube 3D printing sphere that think ABS is the devil. Um, but there is a reason it's like the most commonly used plastic in the world. It's, it, it makes a good match of all the qualities you kind of want in a printer where the ambient air temperature can get above 50 Celsius. size Allen key. I'm not really competing with the beard. It's literally, um, I just kind of got lazy with shaving for a bit. I've always had a beard. I've had a beard for years. I haven't actually like shaved, shaved in probably about six, over six years now, but I, I've always just trimmed it, right? You know, like use like the number five or six setting on the electric razor and just trimmed it every, you know, weekend or whatever. And then uh, just on a whim, I stopped doing that. Ooh, no, wrong one. So, we'll see how long we go before the uh, the wife uh, gets fed up with it. Uh, where to find extrusion with force? Um, I don't have Prusa Slicer installed on my printer or on my computer here, but I do have Super Slicer, so I'll show you in a second here. But in Super Slicer. Uh, it is print settings, slicing is your, uh, where is it? What am I doing? Oh, it's a printer, extruder, nozzles, diameter, 0.4. And then for flow, you would adjust flow at that point. So that's where you put your extrusion width for your walls and whatnot. But this also adjusts flow. Flow and walls are kind of the same thing. There's a lot of settings in, in slicers that do things that people never play with or don't know what they do. Or they kind of work together, they work in tandem. Like, you know how many times I've seen a guide where somebody recommends to, oh, if you're under extruding walls, adjust your E-steps. And you're like, no, don't do that. That's just not the right way to do it. Uh, do you have any tips for drilling acrylic? Okay. um. Acrylic, is it acrylic or plexiglass? I can never remember which one's which. Um, they're both clear plastics, but one is really prone to pla uh, prone to cracking. I think that's acrylic. Um, basically, tape on both sides, and when you're drilling into it, have it on like plywood or a sacrificial wood, and drill slow with not a lot of force. 
um because they crack really easy and then when you go to if you go to drill it and then because you plan on putting like a screw in it um use like a rubber washer or something when you tighten that screw down because if you tighten down that screw bare on it and you put force on it it'll just crack on you Sandwich polycarbonate. Less than 50% likes. Oh my god. Guys, don't you know I'm giving away a set of Voron V2.4 motors courtesy of LDO motors? Come on. That deserves at least, you know, one like of the smash button. And to enter, it's pinned in the chat at the top there. So enter there or check the description. Open worldwide. How many people have entered so far? 324 responses. Good job, guys. Good job. I like giving stuff away. Everyone enter. Okay. So we have our Eilers. That, that picture right there looks a little ominous. Um, I don't know about you. That, that, that looks a little ominous, this picture right here. But anyways... So we've got our Eilers, repeat instructions for opposing corners, repeat instructions for mirror drives. Okay, so we got all four in. Uh, the first design released under the name Voron was the Voron Geared Extruder. That was on January 28th, 2015. Oh, they put little tidbits of uh, little facts in the manual. Okay, next, the bed. Okay, so the bed is, according to the manual, going to be installed now. I don't install the bed now, okay? Um reason for that is it makes the printer heavy and you can install it easily later so because you're going to be flipping this around and you know doing electronics underneath and whatnot um we're going to leave the bed out until pretty much I, I put the bed in after i run the electronics i install the electronics wire up the gantry and everything and then i put the bed in so we're going to skip the bed because it just makes moving this around a lot easier especially on bigger builds on a v0 it's not so much of a, a deal because you know a, a v0 bed it's well this is a minion bed but it, it's nothing but a bed for one of these is you know a couple pounds so so you can go ahead and actually at this point would be a good time to actually if you have to assemble your bed um and by assemble, I have a video, which I think they have it linked there, which... Oh, hey, there we go. So that's a flex plate. Um, so magnet application, heater application, which Dunar, if you're watching, I have a video on that too, if you want to put in the manual. But uh, this would be a good time to get it all ready. But I'm not going to put it in now because it's heavy and I don't want to deal with the weight right now. Do I know where the name Voron comes from? It's Russian for Raven. And it sounds cool. But yes, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Russian cat food, uh, Max, the creator of Voron or founder of Voron, however you want to call it, he's Russian. So, Voron, it's Russian for Raven. Would ABS work for electronics enclosures? Yep. Although anything outside, so you can print your skirts in PLA, uh, Anything outside the chamber, you can do PLA or PTG. Okay, AB drive and idler. So we're going to be working a bit without the frame because you're basically going to build up the whole gantry um, as a U-shape, and then you're going to install it into the printer separate. So we're basically going to build this whole assembly up on our desk, and then we're going to put in the printer. So let's put this away for now. And by put it away, I mean uh, store it on the ground. Any info about the Micron? Um, if you Google Voron Micron, um, that'll bring up the GitHub. Uh, and if you're curious about building one, stay tuned. I have a kit in the other room. We will be building one. So I need that.
like that. That. Nope, we don't need that. That one. That one. That one. That one. And that one. I think. Okay. Uh, Antronk. SEK. 50. Swedish Kroner. Right? Right. Uh, loving your increased output of standalone videos and fan of the streams. Cheers! Yeah, I put a video out today. Just a quick little video on some clipper tips and common questions and, you know, little things that I thought would help people. So. Yeah, DFH. He's, uh... Hold off on ordering from him for a bit until he gets caught up. I think he, he said he was planning on pausing orders on his store for a bit just to get caught up because the poor guy is swamped. Apparently, me deciding to build a, uh... One of his uh, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeders kits uh, kind of slammed him a bit there. Where'd you find the Vi Mi Micron kit? Uh, DFH. Okay, so we're going to build our A drive, B drive, A and B idlers. So, get my solder and iron out. We're going to do some heat sets. Sets for which one is it? This one, and that one. Yeah, there's that on that one. Okay, so we got there, and we also have there, and M5 nuts. Which are just regular nuts. Okay. Oh, he's got it cleared out. Okay. That's good. Curious about the change to the gantry? It's the Trident gantry. a bit flimsy um it's basically like we we the the switch wire was basically the trial for using a single mgn 12 and you know the the weakest part is plastic but your your tool head your actual nozzle is only about halfway out and then uh the trident uses the gantry so it's been running fine on the the trident for months without issue and uh people have been running beta single mgn 12 so the reason, for those that don't know, the reason we went from a single MGN9 to a dual MGN9 for the X-axis is because that's when on 2.4, we went from using Bowden setups previously to a direct feed setup. And the problem was a lot of the cheaper China rails, a single MGN9 had a lot of slop in it. So we just doubled it up. So you'd have a vertical rail and a horizontal rail, and they would kind of make the, they would even each other out in terms of sloppiness and you would get a, a good enough uh, fit um and tolerances uh but now rails have gotten better so a lot of people just run a single mgn 12 and uh a single mgn or a single mgn 9 and then a single mgn 12 is even stiffer so it works it's been tested so also um with dual mgn 9 you had more of a chance of uh binding issues racking issues and twisting issues uh depending on quality of your rails, extrusion, and how well you built the printer. Because, again, you built this printer yourself. So, it's always fun when you see people complaining about whenever, like, not just Voron. I've seen this with other printers. But I built this printer, and it prints like poop. And it's like, well, I, I, I'm looking at the pictures you posted of your build, and you built the printer, and I can see why it prints like poop. Good old heat sets. Again, with heat sets, you only need it hot enough to melt them in. You don't want to burn the plastic, and the LDO kit comes with a, uh, a little heat set tool. Custom icons for chat. I've had that. I've had custom icons for a while. 
Nobody ever uses them because it's not Twitch. Okay, so we have that. I'm not going to put the M5 in um, because I got a trick. So we're going to do some bearing stacks now because it looks like we're doing our front idlers. So we need some F60s. Or F695s. And then we also need our M5 shim. Where's my shim? Precision spacers. So, there's a trick to doing this uh, using an M540, but you still kind of have to stack it all. But if you're like me and you've built... Um, many of Voron over the years, you're going to have a lot of random dowels kicking around. And this is where they come in handy. Mr. Tofu Toast, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, have some extra of the full-time streamer. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, do you think the heat sets... I just go flush. You don't need to go unless it... On... There is a couple spots on a V0 where you need to sink the heat sets deeper than flush. And it is called out. Everywhere else, they're designed to be flush, so you don't need to sink them. So we're going to build this here, and we're going to build uh, the first one here, the A idler. So for that, we need that part. And you'll see what I'm doing here. So I'm using a dowel. Now, you, you can do this with the, uh, the M5 bolt that it shows you how to do it with. But we're going to use a dowel here. I'm not on Twitch, no. I watch people on Twitch, but I, I don't I don't Twitch stream. Why would I do that? The Z Probe dowel works perfectly. Okay, that works. How is my freedom feeling? I feel free. Free as a bird. some of these dowels aren't the greatest but they'll work for our purposes here so anytime again you're doing a, a bearing stack with a boron it's washer bearing bearing washer always in that order so when you double them up if you have like a location where you need two of them it's washer bearing bearing washer washer bearing bearing washer again and then we put our top on which they have little uh cutouts for they should all snap together pretty good if your printed parts are good. Then you slide that one piece over it and then you use an M540. So let's M530. M540. Uh, Twitch is better for streaming and making money. Uh, I'm going to argue against that. Um, Twitch is not good if you're smaller because they take a bigger cut and then if you want to stream on another platform after becoming what is it affiliated because they take 50 percent youtube is 70 30. to get 70 30 with uh twitch you pretty much have to agree to only stream on twitch um i think it's part of their contract or whatever it is and then also um my whole audience is here. Why would I split up my audience? So. Much more extra work contact here like doing pledge drive. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't like... Twitch I still view as gaming. If you game or do um, variety stuff, Twitch makes a little bit more sense. Especially if all you plan on doing is uh, streaming. But, you know, in my case where I do a lot of instructional and tutorial stuff... Uh, VODs are horrible on Twitch. Nobody goes back and watches previous VODs. Where, for me, I get tons of people watch, will watch this stream over the next weeks and months and even, like, years. My my most viewed stream is the gantry assembly for this uh, tall boy, I think. So. Or the V0 build. Yeah. So. Uh... Ooh, LDO Motors, Jason, 100. Thank you, Jason. Uh, happy weekend, War on Friends. LDO 2.4 kit, first batch started to ship. All first batch were sold out. Second batch will be shipped end of March, available to resellers in another six to eight weeks. Okay. 
You mean partner. Yeah, there's like two tiers. You have to have a certain tier to even make money on Twitch and then another tier to make more money, but then you can't stream on other platforms. I don't know. So anyways, I have that dowel, I pushed out with the screw um, and then screwed in the nut. So to make sure you have it together, you're gonna have a screw come through the front here. The heat set has to be on the back portion. So you see here, you got this belt uh, where the belt sits and your extrusion is gonna come out here and the, the hole for the belt. You should see the heat set. If you're looking at it from the front here where the Voron logo is and you see a heat set here, you did it wrong. And then it's a M340 with an M3 washer. Ah, dang it. There's a open bag and I keep knocking all these anymore. M330, no, M340. M340, M3 washers. There's the M3 washers. Okay. Jason, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, LDO starting to work on Trident Kit, and we will try to polish it a bit, make it a more perfect kit with our experience with 2.4 and 01. Warren's team testing and help LDO Trident will be available. Resellers around June, July. There you guys go. Because I know a lot of people are asking for Trident Switch. I, I'm really digging my Trident. You know, it's a Fizek kit. It's, I, I fixed the Fizekness of it. I keep saying screw, bolt, bolt, screw. Uh, pretty much the same thing. They're, in this case, the words are pretty much interchangeable. It's a machinist screw. It's a bolt, machinist bolt, it's just bolt. It's, it's a it's a thingy with the twirly thing on it. Now this is how you tension your belts, by the way, for those that don't know. So when you put this screw in, I pretty much go until the uh, I, I pull the accent piece all the way to the back, and you go until it starts to move, and then you stop. That's pretty much it. So when your belt comes around here. To tighten the belts for your X, your AB belts or your XY belts, you basically tighten the screw here, which moves this forward or backwards, and that's how you tighten and adjust your belt tension. So, let's build the other one. The tension screw is not centered in the R2 part. Oh yeah, that's another thing. It's it's not centered. So that's one of the differences in R2. In, uh, I'll show you here in a second, but it's, the screw is now in line with the, uh, the idler versus before where it was, uh, kind of in the center. So it looked better, but yeah, the advantage of the Trident, um, here's the thing. The, the XY portion of a V2, well now two V2, R2 um, and the Trident are the same. Okay. So you will see on paper, no print quality differences between a, a Trident and a V2. It's the same gantry. It's the same tool head. It's the same. The only difference is your motion. Okay. On a V2, the bed is fixed. Okay. The bed don't move on a V2. It's fixed down. So it's kind of like a, a Delta. Okay. So advantage of that you have a lower center of gravity. All your weight's down here. Um, the downside's a little bit more of a complicated build because now you have four Z motors uh, versus three on the Trident because it does the, uh, you know, plane thing. And then, uh, what else? Um, so it basically just comes down to what kind of bed movement you want. Do you want your bed to move or do you want your gantry to move? Pick one. Or 
M5. Five forty. Yeah, where'd I put my M five forties? M five forty. There it is. So you line it up with that little uh, pin that's holding it all together, or lining everything up, and then you push it through. There we go. So yeah, having a non-moving bed is super nice for mods like bed fan. But if you want to do something like if you if you want to play around and try and make a, a tool changer, um, it's easier with a fixed gantry. Same with uh, you know like the enraged rabbit carrot feeder, right? Use, if you wanted to do an enraged rabbit carrot feeder on like a, a V2, it's a longer Bowden run because you got to move all the way in the X, Y, and the Z. So it, it really comes down to what you plan on doing with the printer and what you're trying to get out of it. The V2 scales in Z better, okay? Um, the Trident, we don't recommend going above. Like the Spec Trident, it's only 250 on the Z because it uses integrated lead screw stepper. So the stepper has the lead screw integrated into it. Um, I prefer that. There's always the chance that you get a bent one from the factory, but if you don't get a bent, bent one, it's better quality than using a coupler. Um, basically, the less things that can go wrong in the system, the better. So, yeah, uh, if you want to build tall, go V2, because lower center of gravity too. A tall trident, every print is going to have the weight all the way at the top. So the printer is going to shake more. Diego, 1837. Have a good weekend, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Taff Fox, uh, Ducks from Raymond, 2 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and Mark, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so what's the deal with the TH3D Studio saying the foreign team is the pocket of Big Tree Tech? Uh, he says all their boards are crap and have a massive DOA issue. Um, here, uh, let me uh, pull up the list of every company that is currently paying Voron, okay? Um, let me find it here. Um, here. So I've got the list here of every company that currently gives cash to Voron um, for us to endorse them. Are you ready? Um, here's the paycheck list of um, absolutely nobody. So, um, yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Companies have reached out to us to work with us. Um, LDO, for example, they they contact us. Hey, we want to make these kits. Are these good things? And you know what? If somebody wants to reach out to us and, hey, we want to make something that has the Voron name on it. Do you guys mind giving it a once over to make sure we're selling a good thing? Yeah, we'll do that. You know, yes, you know, LDO sends out kits for testing to some of the team members. That's about it. Other companies, uh, Fizek for the Spider, um, they worked with some of the guys on the team who have PCB experience to kind of develop that board, but since the the problem is QC, we have no control over QC. So that's why we don't endorse any kits. The Voron team doesn't endorse any kits um, because we have no direct control over the kits because nobody on the team is involved with the making and production and selling of the kits. So we're hands off for a reason. That's why there are no official Voron kits, because we just don't want to deal with that. We'd rather just have fun designing stuff. So, us being in the uh, the pocketbook of Big Tree Tech is a hilarious. So, so yeah, we recommend boards that fit within the budget. SKRs are common; they're relatively cheap, and they do exactly what we want. Uh, the printer is already expensive. So if we were to spec a Duet, which don't get me wrong, I love Duets, great hardware. Um, I'd rather run Clipper on them, but great hardware. But the printer is already expensive. And, and here's 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 the conundrum. Here's here's the thing that people don't get. It's a DIY printer. You can put whatever the heck you want in it. Yes, we say here's the the blank generic cookie cutter Voron. Okay. You want to put Duet threes in it with a 
slice mosquito magnum and go all out with some like gucci 50 dollars o-drive motors it's your build you're building it do what you want with it so yeah just because we have a spec build doesn't mean you know you have to build it spec and it doesn't matter to us how you build it because we don't get paid for you building it. So yeah, remember, uh, TH3D was the guy who came on the Voron Discord, tried to sell, you know, join Piff. We told him, hey, uh, to join Piff, you have to build a Voron. And then he said, I'll get right on that. And then he left. That is the only interaction um, I've ever had with him was he joined, he wanted to join Piff with his print farm of whatever. He has. We said you need a Voron to do that, and then he left. So and that was like years ago. So I don't know. Okay, so we've gone ahead and done both idlers. So both are the same. They're basically mirrors of each other. Um, just make sure that they're opposite of each other. So when you put them together, I'm trying to get this bag open so I can put the washer back in. Cam it, cam it. There we go. And I dropped it. Uh, when you put them together, they should be opposite. So if you're looking at it from the front, when both uh, button heads of the screws or socket heads of the screws are up and the M5 nuts are down, one should be up and one should be down, okay? And then also, on the top, where you have the socket head of the screw, you'll have two M5 holes. And on the bottoms, where you have the nut, you'll have an M5 and an M3 hole. Okay? So as long as you have them like that, you've built them right. Check your work. So this is what I just said. Check your work. There's your M5s up top, your M5, M3, the location of your... Uh, uh, the idler itself, but yeah. You basically want to keep, make sure that you built it right as you go along because it's a pain in the butt if you have to take stuff apart later on. Okay, AB drive. So we're going to start with the A drive. Cutout. The printed parts for the A drive have a cutout. They do. They do. There you go. So you can see here, we're building this big old bearing stack. So we got some M530s. Let me get these there. Parts to the 50. I love my 250, but not enough people build 250s. Honestly, if you don't know uh, what size to build, go with the 300. 350s get big pretty quick. Um, this is a 250. That's a 350. That's a Trident now, but still, that's a 350 by 350 by 250 Trident. They get big, and this is the one I'm building now as a 300. So. Uh, is the Micron a bit smaller the printer than a V0? No, the Micron is about 30 millimeters bigger than a V0 on the XY. It is a little bit bigger than a V0, but it's still 120 bed. Okay, so we're going to put those two M530s in. And this is the A drive part. It's got the two heat sets that we put in. And then upside down assembly. So flip it. And then we're going to build some bearing stacks. Yeah, we'll go with this camera. Go ahead. 350 is heckin' chonk. Yeah, they... Build as big as you need, not as big as you want. Because you gotta remember, too, the bigger your printer is, the longer it's gonna take to heat up, the longer it's gonna take to cool down, the more expensive it's gonna be. 300 is a relatively common size for 3D printers. 350 is not. So if you're self-sourcing... Um, this was a bigger issue back in the days when you had to self-source, but if you were self-sourcing beds, um, heaters, uh, PEI, really, they get expensive at 14 inches, so. So 
So we have a bearing stack here. And then on this one, we have two bearing stacks. So we got washer. Bearing, bearing, washer. Then another washer. Bearing, bearing, washer. Okay. And then we put the other half on. Like so. And then you're going to screw them together. Now, again, at this point, you are screwing into plastic. These are just to hold them in place. There's no actual force on the screws. So screwing into plastic is fine. And you're just going to screw until the, uh, the button head just kind of stops until it bottoms out on the plastic. You don't need to torque it. Okay. You're screwing into plastic. If you strip the threads out, um, you, you're pretty much reprinting at that point. Okay. So we have that. And now we're on to motor stuff. So let me get my AV motors. Tomas, 30 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Greetings from the Voron CZ SK community. Cheers. So, um, because uh, this LDO kit is cool, it comes with these little motor or wire labels. So, I'm going to get the A and the B ones out. So, this way, I don't forget which motor is which later on. So, this will be our A motor. I'll move this down into the um, electrical compartment later after I hook up the other side. Because I'm assuming all those labels are for under the hood. And now we also need our GT222 pulley right here. Uh, why the hold off on the rat rig? Uh, no hold off. It's uh, That's going to take a lot less builds to build. Like I think I only have one build left for mechanical. And then I have to do some CAD work to design up some electronics mounts for the controller board and the uh, power supply, which I won't be able to get done by tomorrow. So I'm going to work on that Saturday night. That way I have next week, at least till Friday, to uh, finish that up and get those fitted. So, oh, hey, we got a bot. Die bot. Report. Report. Goodbye. And again, don't forget, if you have not entered yet, um, link in the description and also pinned in chat. If you want to win a set of Voron V2.4 motors from LDO motors, um, enter. Open worldwide. And because I got a million questions on this last week, um, these set screws have thread locker pre-applied. Uh, people on the Voron team have to buy their own Fusion 360. Um, I think a few have full licenses. I, I just use the commercial or the uh, hobbyist license. Because um, I think last I checked, you're allowed to use it uh, until you make up to like 50000 a year with it or something like that. Which I don't. <laughs> I do not make that much off CAD work. So. Uh, Felix20, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thank for your build streams. You are the main motivation for me to build a Voron. Aw. Uh, I have an 01 kit and a 2.4 kit, kit coming. Which should I build first? Whatever one shows up at your door first. Because uh, let's be honest, if one shows up and it's not the one I tell you to build it first, you're going to start building it anyways. Okay, so... We have this wonderful little printed jig here, and this sets the position of our pulley. So for A drive, um, it's this tab right there. So it's kind of one of those 
be really nice if I had three hands right about now type things. Put a little tension on it so it doesn't move so easily. There we go. So A drive. A little too much tension, dang it. There we go. Okay. Uh, if you had a choice of doing a pin mod right now out of the gate or doing stock, what is your choice? Um, I run stock. Uh, we've tested using, um, uh, what are they called? Not dowel pins. What are they? Shoulder bolts, um, which is pretty much the same thing. You have a, uh, a flat surface for the bearings to ride on. And we couldn't tell the difference in print quality. So for the cost, it wasn't really something we were too interested in pursuing it's one of those things some people swear by it other people see absolutely no benefit to it so because this is a kit i'll say the same thing i did with the uh the the Fizek build i'm building it to spec i'm building it as the kit came um these are m330s right now we're attaching the motor um because you know i gotta review the kit so i'm building with what came with the kit Super glue versus thread locker. Is it really worth the... Yes. Super glue and thread locker are two wholly, completely different things. Thread locker is basically just to make it so that the threads won't back out from vibration and whatnot. Uh, super glue glues them. So usually you're using thread locker. Um, you can undo the threads relatively easily by hand. You're just putting the thread locker in there just to keep it from, you know, coming loose from vibration. Okay, now we're screwing into metal here, but again, it's resting on plastic, so don't over tighten. And then check and look that your 20 tooth lines up. Uh, the belt, if when it goes through all of this, is lined up. So if your 20 tooth is like way off from where the uh, idler is for the, the teeth or the, uh, the flats, adjust it now. You can also get in there and adjust it when you actually run your belts. So a drive done. Check your work. Compare it to the assembled pitcher. Okie dokie. So I'm looking at it from the back. I've got two up top, one in the bottom, two up top, one in the bottom, and the 22th lines up with the top. We're good. A drive done. Preferred thread lock color. Uh, blue, green, red, or orange. Um, you pretty much want to use the weakest here. You don't need to go all red thread locker. Red is a bitch. Red, you need to get, like, heat to get off. Uh, blue, you can get off. You can undo it with uh, force if you're lucky. Um, but it's kind of a pain on smaller screws. Especially with the screw size you're working with. Green um, is where you go. Or, or um, you be a total boss and uh, use Sally Hansen Hard as Nails Extreme Wear. Because this is what I use. <laughs> it just clear nail polish. It works good enough. But these screws come with thread locker, so it's a non-issue. Uh, for those following it along at home, for set screws, you want to put thread locker on. Okay, so we're doing a bearing stack, and it's the opposite now. So now we have a double bearing stack, then a single bearing stack. Three D HP. Hello. Uh, yeah, it does say where the stepper, where the cable comes out. Uh, right here. Cable motor orientation. Pay attention to the orientation of the cable exit. The wires from the motors will be pointing towards each other when it's fully assembled. And then on the check your work. Oh, you can't see it from the angle, but that's why. 
yeah, it's covered in a previous step. What do I mean by set screw? Set screw, uh, grub screw is another name for it. It is the little screws, uh, focus, that you see in these uh, 20 tooth gears. So these are set screws or grub screws is another name for them. Um, that's the thing. There's a lot of like regional names for things depending on where you work or what trade you're in. I call them grub screws because that's where the tool shop that I worked at, that's what people there called them. Like the same reason I call my uh, my calipers a vernier. It's because everyone there called them verniers. So, it's like a depends on where you live. So, washer, bearing, bearing, washer, washer, bearing, bearing, washer, washer, bearing, bearing. Put the top on. There we go. Up it. Should I reapply thread locker if I undo the screw? Um once or twice, not really. If you do it several times, then you may want to do it. There is reusable thread lockers, too, if you want to hunt those down. Uh, BC3, I think. I used to have a bottle of it, and then I, I accidentally left it open, and it it expired on me. And it was a sad day, because I really like that stuff. I think it's called BC3. Okay, so... B drive, so B motor. And now this one, you're putting the uh, pulley on upside down. Start calling your calipers a tape measure. <laughs> Here's my slide rule. And then uh, it's the B, so we're using the B. There we go. Now you can you can adjust these later if you need to. So. Not a big deal. Start calling your... Oh, wait, I read that already. Has your brother proposed it? Yes, he did. She said yes. So, congrats, uh, Mitchell, if you're listening. Okay, again, uh, when it comes to... You're looking from the front. The front has the logo. Wires come out the side. So we get some M330s up in here. Has the Voron team ever considered... Uh, specifying bomb items by their mil, FED, or NAS numbers. Um, I think there's DIN numbers for some of them. I think some things are listed by their DIN number in the bomb. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let me check here. Let me pull up the, the Trident, because that's the latest one. Yeah, so if you look at the sourcing guide, you can see ISO standards for a lot of stuff and DIN numbers. Not for everything, but for some stuff. It, it really depends. But for like the screws, there's all your ISO stuff. So it, it's there for some of it. My brother, no, he doesn't. YouTube. No, nope, because those are very United States specific. There you go. That's why those didn't even sound familiar to me and I'm Canadian, so. 
Uh, one of the kind of rules of the Voron team is we try to make everything as um, globally sourceable as possible. So that's why there are no Vorons that use custom parts. Um, people ask about it all the time. Why, why don't you have like, uh, why don't you use metal this or why aren't those sitting there? Um, how come you guys don't, you know, like, uh, the rail core, the rail core, there's a lot of available machine parts for it. Um, part of the goals and like the design goals of Voron is anyone can build this printer anywhere in the world without needing custom parts. You shouldn't have to source custom parts to build a Voron. So because of that. Um, pretty much everything in the sourcing guide is globally sourceable um, and no custom parts. So that's why you don't see like American standards. Uh, what do you think about the HBOT versus Core X what? Uh, HBOT's prone to racking, last I heard. You don't see a lot of HBOTs anymore. Does the VZ1 have a custom Acme motor screw? No, it's, it's, it, well, it's a standard lead screw. It's whatever pitch lead screws are. I think they, are they Acme? Um, yeah, they would. No, they're trap. No, they're trapezoidal. They're trapezoidal. I don't think they're acne. Um, but the motor itself is commonly available from several vendors that are available worldwide. That was kind of, we had to get that kind of, we had to reach out to a few different companies to get that specific, um, size motor with specific length lead screw made because we needed that specific size to fit in there. Oh, here's another tip. Uh, V24, not V2.4, was an experimental design. Only two have ever been built. Its design became the basis for the Voron 2. Oh, there you go. Hey, Gantry. I think, are we doing rails now? Oh, no, we're doing uh, heat sets. So, B idler, B drive, A drive, blah, 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 blah. We're building this now. So we're gonna put some uh, stuff together. So more heat set stuff. Is that the only heat set stuff I gotta play with? I think so. Mike 6 is cast, uh, 508 is alloy. Basically, you don't want rolled. <laughs> you don't want rolled aluminum beds. That's the big one you want to avoid. Because it will just flex on you. Um, do they come with the two? I think they come with the two. Yeah, they come with the two. Pretty sure that stuff's two. Electronics, electronics, belts, chains, and fans. There we go. Pretty sure these are two. Yep, they're two. Okay. also include um i think there is a recommended lube included in the um sourcing guide it's a mobile lux ep1 but i have a whole video on lubing 3d printers basically if it's a nlgi zero or nlgi one spec lube that doesn't have additives that would be considered abrasive so don't i think it's molybdenum molybdenum there, there is one we recommended for a while it turns out it actually destroys ball bearings at the sides we're working with don't use it but um yeah, some people like PTFE. I, I use white lithium because I got a giant tube of the stuff. It's a 3D printer. The loads that your motion system are experiencing are well below whatever the max load of even an MGN9 rail is or even MGN7. So uh, pretty much as, as long as it's like a lubricant of some sort and it's not like, you know, peanut butter thick, you're good. Personally, I don't like oils. I find oils don't last um, long enough. So use uh, a grease, which uh, for those that don't know, greases are oil. Uh, grease is just oil with a thickener or a thickening agent. Or no, a th is it a thickener or thickening? You're not, you're adding oil to something to give it bulk. That's what a grease is. So it, it greases oil. It's just with something else to make it gummy. Any idea why the ZLRs and my LDO V01 would only move in 
or why the Z of my LDO would only move in one direction on separate buzz. Like it should move up, down, up, down, up, down. If it's only moving like up, um, check your wiring, check your crimps. Um, make sure the wires are all in the same order. Um, potentially try it in a different socket too to make sure there's nothing wrong with the driver. So switch it with like an A or B motor or even the extruder and try stuff or buzz then to see if it moves. Um, yeah, there'd be a few things to check. And then check in the uh, the Voron Discord in the help section for the V0. Any place to get Black PI? Fermio is the only one I know at the moment or the only one I've really looked into. Uh, so which to choose, generic cable chains uh, or I guess R2. So th these ones actually have, um, these LDO chains are two. Are these I guess? They're not I guess, but they're, they're, they look better than your average China chain. So we'll go with that. Okay, so now we need an extrusion uh, for the gantry. And this is the little one that goes across the back. So this will be your smallest uh, extrusion piece. When will the R2 parts will be available? Within a week, hopefully. There's your number, guys. Within a week, R2 should be available. Uh, check pin definitions at direct. Well, it, if it shouldn't matter if the directions are correct because the stepper buzz moves in one direction and then it moves back. So it shouldn't matter which direction, like it could be wrong, you would still get both movements. He's saying it's only going one way. So instead of going, eh, 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 it's going, eh, 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 or, eh, 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 which, no bueno. Okay, so, uh, we're loading in some T-nuts on the extrusion. So two in the top, two in the bottom on each side. I am hungry. I don't know what I'm doing for dinner tonight. Let's see if the wife get out of work early. There, he said it. What'd I say? Triangle Lab says black PI. Oh, well, they do, they do. I've never tried it though. I actually, it's shocking. I haven't bought stuff for 3D printers off AliExpress in like a little while. It's been a while. Holy shit. And then we put on that and then M510s and then I'm assuming you put the other one on. So let's check here, M510, yep. Uh, the Trident 250Z also 250, yes. Uh, the Trident, it should be two spec. You might lose, depending on how you build it in connectors, you might be like 245, but a, a 250Z Trident should be 250 or pretty damn close. Okay, so M510s, so. Now, when you put it together, slide in. I think all Trident. The spec Trident is uh, 250 because of the uh, integrated Z lead screw motors. So, if you want to build a taller Trident, you need to find um, a source. For integrated Z lead screw motors that are longer than the spec ones, or use couplers and your own uh, lead screws of whatever length, and you may lose Z because of couplers. Couplers add, you can't go as low with couplers as you can with integrated Z lead screws. So, so you may lose some uh, motion, or you may lose some uh, build volume. Should I wait for the R2 kit? with the LDO or will it work with R1? So pretty much everything, uh, do you, like if you haven't bought a kit, like the LDO kit is R2, okay? The LDO kit is R2 and the everything for R2 will be out, well, most of it, the printed parts, manual, hopefully within a week, okay? There's like, we're wrapping up loose ends like sourcing guide and pictures and drawings and that kind of stuff. So it's close to being done, but it's not done yet. So by the time your kit shows up, you should be able to start printing parts or before your kit shows up. 
But if you're building a Voron V2 right now, go R2. There's no reason to go R1 unless you already have um, a built R1, a partially built R1. Um, yeah. Uh, Lecter, 18 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, building the 18th Voron printer at the moment. That's a lot of Vorons. Uh, thank you for your tips and hacks. Appreciate it. How do you re-grease the blocks of linear guide when they are mounted? Uh, very carefully. There's like a few tricks. I'm going to do another amendum video to the, the greasing video that I put out a little while ago. Um, but it depends if you lucked out and you have rails that have the ability to be re-greased. Not all do. In that case, David, um, within a week, hopefully. Cat of the Trident has 249 points at. Yeah, you're not. 250 is like magical, perfect world because you're going to, you know, depending on how your printed parts are, you might have a little bit of variance. Depending on how, you know, the guy cutting your rails that day cut things and the extrusions or how you built it and how flat your surface was and what hot end you used. And there's. I think we figured out the, the dragon has three different lengths. Like, depending on which model of dragon you have, where the nozzle is, can be in, like, three different spots. Because they have different body lengths. Like, there's gonna... You're not gonna get it perfect. That's why you have to go through and, like, set your config to make sure everything's good and hunky-dory. Okay, so we have that, we have that. Hey, rail time! That means we gotta clean some rails. So, I forgot to do that off-stream. I am sorry, guys. So, you guys can watch me clean rails again. Because I didn't plan on streaming this build until, like, last night. Because somebody like, are you going to build tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's have a stream. Let's build something. Uh, the Firefly has two lengths. Yeah. Uh, you estimate how much the upgrade to R2 and is it worth it? If you already have a fully functional... 2.4 um, and you have no issues with your x-axis gantry so you're not having binding issues or twisting issues um, upgrading to 2.4 don't bother that's my personal opinion now if you're building new or you haven't started your build um, it's pretty much the cost of a single MGN 12 rail and printed parts and then the feet the feet are different do I have gloves? I should have gloves. I have gloves. So far, the Rapido only has one. <laughs> Same with the Revo. Well, it depends on which uh, heat sink you use on the Revo. David, 195. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Oh, these are like clean already. good. That one's good. LDO rails are good. Okay, so we gotta grease them. Easiest way I found to grease them is just to uh, do this. So I still haven't made the trip to Princess Auto, or Harbor Freight for you Yanks. Um, so I am using this. This is... Um, when your kid gets sick and you got to give them medicine, you get these droppers that go in like the baby Tylenol or whatever. Uh, they work good enough for this, so. Fill them with grease, and this is just white lithium grease. So, to grease them, um, you line up a hole on the carriage in the middle. You put the hole over the hole and you go splooge. And that fills up the carriage with grease. Move it around a bit. And you're good. Same thing here. Am 
And let's do the MGN12 as well, because we're going to have to do it eventually anyways. Our two files will be out in a week or so. They'll be up on the GitHub when they're out. They aren't finished yet. I knew this would happen. It's like, can I announce that R2 will be out in a week? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Hopefully it'll stop people from asking about when R2 will be out. Nope, it does not. <laughs> Paper towels go. Is that back there? Nope. I had a whole thing of paper towels. There we go. And ice them. Where is my cleaner at? Yeah, whatever. Oh, there it is. Let's, put, let's store the isopropyl alcohol on the computer. That's a good idea. Don't forget, guys, uh, we're doing a draw for our uh, Voron V2.4 motor kits from LDO Motors at the end of the stream. Um, so if you have not entered yet, link in the description or it's pinned in uh, chat there. So make sure you enter if you want to win a chance or you want a chance of winning uh, a set of V2.4 motors from LDO. Open worldwide. Okay, so soon is it within a week? Yes. Hopefully. It's sticky, it's pinned. It's actually a really good way of greasing these up. It really. You, with bearings, like. You really shouldn't. Like, with oil, you see it with oil with, um, I think Prusa recommends, you just put a drop oil on the rails, or the rods. The thing is, they have rubber wipers on them, so they wipe away most of, most of the oil or lube that you put on the rods or the rails. Um, that's why the wipers are there, they're to prevent stuff from getting in and gumming up your bearings. So, if you want to do it the proper way, you have to get it inside. And with grease, because it's thicker than oil, you're going to get even less in. Okay, so M38s, so let's get these guys out. Oh, I got grease on my brand new stream deck. Dang. Okay, so printed guides, got those two. M38s, which I've got a billion of. And then my extrusions, which are the C extrusions. And you're gonna install them roughly centered, or 25 millimeters from the end. Um, mine the carriage. The carriage are designed to slide along the rail easily. This unfortunately also includes sliding off the rails. Dropping the carriages likely irreparably damage it. So don't drop them. Insert the T-nuts. So you have to make sure when you're putting these T-nuts in, um, because there's the hole is closer to one side, at the first one and the last one, you have to have the hole uh, closer to the outside because you got other T-nuts that need to be installed. So just keep that in mind. tie your holes well we're, the thing is you can't really put a zip tie through if you're mounting them but uh these come with little rubber stoppers uh that prevent them from flying off so you got little rubber stoppers and you're only putting the screws in every other one remember okay see extrusion so we got three extrusions left if you're doing it right and you're, the two that you need now are the two that are the same so let's put these in
too small. Well, now I can just do this. If somebody asks, I'll just go. I'm gonna do any one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I know what we could do. The next one that asks gets banned. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Koisha, member for 10 months. Hello. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I dropped one. He's a dancing baby. That's only uh, to distract you guys when I go offline or I have to go look for something. This is live? What? This is live? Make the banner claim that R2 is cancelable. <laughs> if you kids don't shut up, I'm turning this printer around. Seventy-five likes. Everyone like the smash button. You can do it. Uh, white lithium spray. I've used that on my uh, the white lithium spray WD-40, which is not WD-40. It's it, WD-40 is the company. Um, the white lithium is the grease. I've used that on um, the MGM sevens because they're so small, and this stuff that I use is a little thick for MGM sevens. So no banner on this camera. I know, I'm not going to bother going through and setting up a banner on every camera. I don't have that much motivation to do it. Uh, hmm, Raymond, your name is familiar. Everyone loves Raymond. So keep your screws loose until you get them all uh, installed because you're probably going to have to shift it around a little bit here and there to kind of line up screws with these uh, the T-nuts. Now it's 25 millimeters from the end. There we go. By designing a printer from scratch, would a 2.4 be the most efficient? No! Warrens are not... You don't need four motors. Like, are we talking about like the simplest, most cost-effective printer? You're you're looking at the Ender Three. It's a it's a reason you can get them for under two hundred bucks at times. Actually, 
Why am I screwing these in by hand like a Neanderthal? Start from the center, work your way out. RJ, $10, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I'm here to add a bit more money to the Prusa XL fund. Oh yeah, Papa Joey P is gonna be wanting that bill paid at some point. I'm actually looking forward to that though. I have yet to, you know, use a Prusa. Um, I'm hoping they come out with a Mark IV at some point. Um, basically the tool head from the, uh, XL with like the bet or, you know, a better controller board, more features, a little bit smarter. Cause the Mark three is showing its age. Honestly, I, you know, just going off of specs, I, I can't recommend a, a Mark three nowadays. Bruce and Minnie seems good. I'd love to play around with one of those, but, uh, the Mark three is starting to get old. Especially compared to like other printers on the market, especially for the cost. Like it's a good, it's a good printer, but it's very hard to. It's getting harder and harder to justify it. Warren's better quality of life. It's also a self-built printer. There's a, there's a huge difference between you know a hobbyist DIY machine and a commercial machine. Like there's a reason you know nobody sells pre-built Vorons to consumers like we, we do try to QC and quality control as much of the design as possible internally before we push it out um, 2.4 R2 has been functional for a while it's just you know tweaks and designs and like I, I printed all my parts within the last like three weeks and uh, I've had to reprint some parts for changes so stuff is always being tweaked and worked on but it was never meant to be a commercial printer. Okay. It's like anytime somebody asks, oh, can I, should I build a Voron for my print farm? It's like, or should I build a Voron for work? Because work needs a, a 3D printer. And it's like, are you okay doing all the maintenance on it yourself and having no warranty and, you know, being at the mercy if something goes wrong? Oop, I did this backwards. No, oh, no, I did that the right way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Robert, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. Got to run. Going to get stuck in Mardi Gras traffic. If not, thanks for the stream. Cheers. Let me know if I win those motors. I'll let you know. Also, it, it's Mardi Gras already. Like... Already? We are the warranty. I thought Mardi Gras is like on a Tuesday, isn't it? 2x faster. You could already outrun pretty much all commercial hot ends on the market with a, a, a V0 with NEMA, NEMA 14s. Like... We're at the limits, like, we, we've pretty much plateaued for what you can get out of a home 3D printer right now in terms of reliable production. Because, let's be honest, those speed benchies, they don't look good. Nobody's actually running those speeds when it comes to practical printing. It's like drive, It's like daily driving a Ferrari. You, you can do it, but it's not really a good idea. Abraham Gonzalez, 999. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, just because your content is awesome. Thank you. If you haven't seen today's video, go watch it. Give it a like. It's uh, just a bunch of quick clipper tips just to kind of help you guys out. 
and I go over what the difference between a G90 and a G91 movement command is in a 3D printer or a CNC machine. Go. It's 25 millimeters, right? Yeah. So the current plan is, depending on where we're at with the gantry, uh, 7 o'clock for the stream. So just a nice little three-hour stream. And then carry on tomorrow. I would like to get the mechanicals done this week. That would be something I would like to do. But we'll see. Or, yeah, we'll see. Uh, LDO Motors, Jason. Are you will? We'll pay $10 more for the whole kit. We customize a T-nut bar for linear rails. A real fuel paint. Oh, like, okay, so uh, for those that don't know, on the V0, um, because you got to use, like, rinky-dink little M2.5 nuts, um, they went and made a little bar that replaces uh, the T-nuts, or the, the M3 nuts, in a printed part. So, uh, yeah, if you want to make a, a custom bar that fits under here that has all the tapped holes, that would work. The only downside is you you would it would be more than the V0 because you'd have to... Uh, make it for different sizes of the printer and you'd have but yeah that that would work that'd be cool uh for ten dollars more i don't know it would probably save you a bunch on t-nuts <laughs> that's i think where most of the t-nuts go in this printer is uh in there so Uh, I can't afford a daily driver Ferrari. My 438 F348 Spider gets 14 miles per gallon on Highway 7 in town. <laughs> it's like, uh, what is it? The Rainier Wolf Castle. Uh, when he goes to pick up Bart in the uh, the Canyon Arrow. And was it? Homer's like, ooh, what's the gas mileage? Like, one highway, zero city. Would save time in lining them. Uh, you would still have to put the jig on to make sure they're lined up. But yeah, that would. Definitely help a bit. What time? I'm Eastern time zone and probably a little over an hour, depending on where we get at with the gantry. I would like to get the gantry in the printer. So we'll see where we end up at. So Y axis, so. Extrusions are on the bottom, right? Yeah. So we've got to put. There. Get rid of this uh, slap mat here. Good tip. Uh, buy a cheap slap mat off AliExpress or Amazon or whatever, and just kind of keep that around for whenever you're working with oils and grease, just to keep your workbench from getting all gunky. It's also really good with resin prints. Okay, so uh, flip them upside down and put two T nuts in each end M5. Okay, I can do that. Canyon Arrow, what is it? Four, four cars long, two lanes wide. Was it 16 tons of American? No, what is it? How's it go? Ah. Four cars long, two lanes wide, 16 tons of American pride. Canyon Arrow. I, I don't know. It's been a while. That was back when the Simpsons were good. Two. There are people alive today that have kids that are in school that were born after Simpsons stopped being good. Zombie Simpsons has been along around way too long. <laughs> Can you name the truck? What is it? Can you name the truck with four-wheel drive? Smells like a steak and seats 35. Can you narrow? Can you narrow? 
Unexplained fires are a matter for the courts. I'm, I'm, I'm dating the audience now. One second here. When was that? I'm, I'm gonna feel very old now. No, I'm not. Okay, it's not that old, but still. The Last Temptation of Krusty, Season 9, Episode 15. February 22nd, 1998. That's when the Canyon Arrow episode of The Simpson was. And I would play the clip, but I'm on YouTube and I'd get, you know, Fox would take all my money. Now, on the other side, uh, you need to have an M5 nut and an M3 nut on both sides. Okay? So M5 and M3 on the other side. And it's the M3 goes inward, and you can see how they have to orientate the T nuts. So. David Knowles, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was my birthday yesterday, so I definitely feel old. 39. Uh, thanks for sharing these videos. Helped me a lot when I built my 2.4. That's good to hear. That's why I did them. This whole channel started just doing tutorial videos to help people out. And then I realized I hate editing and I have more fun doing it live because I don't have to edit it. And for the record, I turn 34 next month. And then M5s. Sure, I spilled a whole bunch in here. 39 kids. <laughs> uh, the backers are different. The backers are for um, the heat soak, which hit and miss. Some people like it. Some people like. Some printers see more of a benefit off of having backers than others. Depends on your size of printer. Um, the extrusions, the rails, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff at play when it comes to the backers. So, okay, so we have that. And then we put the front and the back on. So the front has the 25 millimeter gap, which I'm sure is here. Yeah. So you're putting M516s and you're also putting this little uh, cover plate here on the top. Now this is for your um, belt. So we're just putting in for now. You're going to be taking this out later actually uh, because you have to uh, wiggle the belts in. So. screw and move it in. Check in here. Yeah, see, so for some reason this ain't working. It's supposed to be out, out. Unless I'm reading it wrong. Out, out. That doesn't even fit. That sits way too far out. I'm wondering if I need to not use that screw there and move it in. It should sit. 
This is why you should always have the cat open for reference. Yeah, see, so it should sit right up against that M flush. Which, and that depends. This is one of those things that you're gonna have to fiddle with because not everything is the same. So if you look at these extrusions here, um, extrusions are usually made in one long piece and then just some guy chops them. So on these ones, um, the hole on this size of printer with this type of extrusion is right at the edge. Where if you look at the CAD, um, it's not right at the edge. There, there's a difference in length. So you're gonna have to adjust stuff. So what we're gonna have to do on this guy is on these two, uh, oh, dropped apart. Yep. Overhead. On these two screws here, on this side I'm fine. On this side I'm fine because um, odd number of holes and screws, um, it just happened to work out. But on this side, I'm gonna have to move uh, this screw in and this screw in so that we don't have a screw right at the edge so that these could slide in under the rail. So, is what it is. Not a big deal. Peanuts offset? Uh, they are offset correctly. It's the problem is with these rails, these screws holes are right at the very edge of the rail. Um, that's not really an issue. Like we're only using every other hole. So it's not like, you know, it's gonna all fall apart on you for having uh, two screws there. And they're upside down, so you're not gonna see it anyways. So, who knows, maybe on the uh, on the 250 and the 300, the way they're cut, it, it, it's just, it's a non-issue, it's just something you have to look into if you run into that issue, so. I'm gonna probably have to pop that out. And spin it around. I don't think that'll fit in there with... Eh, that'll fit there. Yeah, that would fit. Yeah, that'll work. When was the last time I printed PLA? Uh, a couple days ago. I was printing something on the switch wire. I do, I do print PLA, it's just PLA prints for me are pretty much only relegated to uh, fancy shiny stuff to show off. Like I don't use them for anything structural. Now we can put this back together. Yeah, see, so it has to go underneath a little bit. So, no biggie. And then what we're gonna do, is gonna put these there so that our Carriages don't go flying because you do not want that to happen. When I have an extra M3, I don't know. When I have two extra M3s, I don't know. There we go. That goes on. Uh, this printed part pretty much comes up to the rail. And then you're going to, there's two M, what was it, M5, what did the manual say? Lamb, thank you for coming to member. M516s, I believe. Yeah, M516s. 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
30. Nuts. X nuts. And five six nuts. ABS said 280. Ooh, that's hot. Oh, and by the way, for those that don't know, um, on these little tabs here, focus, there you go, you have like a notch. The notch goes on the outside. That way you can wrap the belt around and not have to cut it flush. So the notch goes on the outside like that. So many people put this together wrong. I think we're just doing the other side. Yeah, so flush install, make sure the plastic part sits flush with the end of the extrusion. You can't check that it's installed with the correct idler. So, get something that you know is flush. Get flush. Okay. There we go. Notch orientation. The orientation, yeah, so make sure you have the uh, the cutout on the outside. And then we're doing the other side, it looks like. So. Clipper or thermal run, yeah. Clipper runs, um, Warren's run Clipper, which has thermal runaway. I think we tested it where I like disconnected a thermistor and it tripped within like two seconds or something like that. So that's good. You don't have to worry about like really having these tight right now because you're going to be undoing them later. But we're just going to use it to square everything up. Again, double check at this point. The plastic parts go inward, so they're, they're gonna be like that at the front. And then on the right, you should have up on the screw, and on the left, you should have down on the screw. Okay, so we have that there, bada bing, bada boom. So we're putting it in with M516, and you're not putting the screws in in the bottom. So the screws on the bottom, where the side where your rail is, don't bother putting them in yet because there's, you'll see. Echo 2 Papa 2, I followed the current 2.4 manual and put four screws in, ooh. Yeah, there's a call out. That's why there's call outs now um, because I think it is mentioned in the 2.4 manual to use every other screw, um, but it's like not noticeable or something. And a lot of people did that where they only put four screws in. It's like, no, it's just, it's a representation because the manual covers one side. The manual, everything is designed around a 250 because the only thing that's different in the different size Vorons, like a 250, a 300, a 350, is the size of the bed, the lengths of your rails and extrusions, and the numbers of screws and bolts. The uh, the plastic parts and the assembly method is the exact same. So, R2, the R2 is just a revision of the 2.4. So it has everything we've learned from like the Trident and whatnot over the past year or so. And it's an update. Um, there's a link in the description to the LDO kit I'm building that has a list of what's in the LDO kit. That there will be a a list of why is that up? There you go. Pop that down. Um, there will be a list of everything that is uh, specific to R2 uh, when it's released. So don't worry. Okay. So now we are putting on uh, the Y rails, and again, you're just putting the top in with. Uh, M516s and the little plastic piece. Fine. Two more of them. One, ah, ah, ah. Two, ah, ah, ah. This 
Skirts are different. Skirts are different. There's a there's a bunch of random little changes in some parts. Some parts are a lot more changed than others. Um, your biggest change is the gantry is now MGN12. I've gone over this earlier in the stream. Um, that's why I'm just kind of skipping through it all. This will be the 18th time I've explained what the R2 is. We are getting increasingly efficient at it. So notch orientation, it covers it there. Flush install, same thing. one who asks to get yelled at. You're late. I've explained it once. I shall not explain it again. But I will explain that if you have not had the chance yet to enter the draw for the LDO Motors uh, kit for V2.4 Motors, the entry is pinned in chat and also in the description of the video. It's open worldwide. If you have not entered that, do this now. And while you're down in the description, make sure you like that smash button. It helps the metrics and it pleases the YouTube gods. Um... There, ah, shoot, somebody has the, there is a way to get the M600 working on Clipper. Um, I've never actually used it, though, because <laughs> I don't bother with that. Okay, so we have that, that, that will be in a, I will keep doing tip videos. They're nice and easy videos to make. It doesn't require a lot of prep. Pretty much just turn the camera on, record tips and tricks. Okay, so we got now to get those two out and the top pieces because we're putting the X gantry together. One, two, okay. So we're gonna need M5 nuts. Six, that's a lot of nuts. All hail the algorithm, yes. Would you ever consider doing a deep dive video on Clipper macros to better understand them? Uh, this seems long, but does help. Uh, what do you want to know about macros? They're basically just packaged G-code files. So if you want to run the same G-code repetitively or, you know, on command, you just wrap it in a macro. So your starting G-code, for example, or your ending G-code or filament chain G-code or however else you want the G-code. These are probably all going to fall out because my printing tolerances are, yeah, loose. Because they're nice and loose. Filament path. Okay, so we'll just build. We'll build it up as we go. So M five forties. We're gonna need a bunch of these guys, and we're gonna need our fancy dancy bearings, our precision shims, and idlers. Because this kit comes with idlers. You know, I normally use. Um, smooth idlers instead of the tooth idlers because the kit comes with them I'm gonna use them the more advanced things let's well, see the thing is I don't I don't do a lot of those advanced things my, my configs on a lot of my machines are pretty much just the stock config I'm I'm very basic in terms of how I run my machines like I don't I don't fiddle with them. I don't, you know, I get them up, I get them running, and then I just start printing with them. <laughs> so the first one you're gonna build, um, there's two sets. So the easiest way is there's these little notches for a cable channel um, in one side, and that's the one we're working on first. So we've got it like that. Put our M540 through there. Flip it, and then we're doing a bearing stack. 
Yeah, you, you want macros and the and like what you can actually pull off in Clipper. Um, look at like the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder macros. The wizardry in those things is insane. Like, there's look, the macros for the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder legit have Python code in them because Clipper can just read that and handle it. So there's like Python code in the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder macros. It's nuts. We've done that. Put the other two in. And don't over tighten the pulley. Okay, so we'll put two more in. Put the nuts in there. Uh, with so many machines you could fiddle with at least one hours of debugging fun that's the thing i have so many different machines normally once i get them up and running i just leave them like many of them are running whatever version of clipper or mainsail or fluid i installed when i built them and then that's it like you know after that clipper update where you have to reflash the skrs i'm like i've done a few of them but i need to do i do need to schedule in a maintenance day where i just come down here and update all these This one just goes in here. No washer. Um, we just have a printed washer on the bottom there because that's all you need. So this just goes in there. The M540 screws in from the top and it's screwing into plastic. So don't reef on it. So just screw it till it stops and you're done. Okay, that's it. If you screwed it in too tight and it doesn't spin, back it off a bit until it spins. That spins, that spins, we're good. Done. There is our right side. Uh, another bot. Be gone, bot. Do I pip with any of my printers? No, I used to uh, when I had more free time. Okay, so we built that one up. And now we're building the other one up. Head. So that goes like that. That goes. What am I doing? Just goes in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that. Yeah, okay. That side doesn't have a... Uh... Huh. This ain't right. This ain't right. I'm doing this backwards. What am I doing? Did I put this together right? That's right. Yeah, that goes like that. That goes like that. That goes there. Okay, that's what I was doing. Like, looking at this all funky at. That goes there. That goes there. Goes there. That goes there. That goes there. That goes in the bottom. And then we take it. Okay, start. 
Okay. And then we put the other two. And then the pulley. Make sure all your parts are lined up before you uh, paint them together. Okay. Thoughts on the 48 volt uh, printer videos? So if if you don't, okay. When it comes to 48 volts um, on your printer, do you plan on doing speed benchies or running really, 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 really fast uh, to the point where you're almost outrunning your hot end? Because yes, when you run 24 or 48 volt motors, um, you will see the motors run better. The higher the voltage up to a certain point when they don't work anymore, um, you know, motors run better at 24 volts than they run at 12 volts. Uh, motors run better at 48 volts than they do at 24 volts. Um, if the drivers can handle it, they also same thing. They run better at higher voltages. You get more more torque. They run a little bit quieter, I believe, and they're more efficient um, at higher voltages. However, it's a diminishing return thing. So unless you're pushing your printer past the point where 24 volt motors aren't keeping up anymore, going to 48 volts, it might be a little bit quieter but you're not gonna see any difference unless you plan on pushing your printer more than a 24 volt uh, setup can handle. I've tested both my V2 and couldn't notice the difference. Yeah, unless you're at that edge where you're pushing for sub three minute benchies and you need your stepper motors to be at peak efficiency. Um, yeah, no, it, there's no reason to, cause you have to have a controller board that can handle 48 volts, which most most can't. The ones that do usually can only handle it for like two drivers. Um, I think there are a few that can handle it for all of them. And then you need to buy high voltage steppers, which cost more. Um, and then you also have to have a 48 volt power supply in the printer. Um, so it, there is extra steps involved. It do, there is added cost. So you pretty much, you know, it's gotta be worth it to do it, in my opinion. Uh, they run cooler too, that's right. The higher voltage, the, the motors and the steppers run cooler. Okay, so we put that together. Okay, now we are putting together our last extrusion. So let's get this out of the box, which means I can get rid of that box. Okay. My M12 printed jig. T-nuts, blah, 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 same thing. All the ones on the ends need to be facing inwards. Uh, mine the carriage, 15 millimeters from the end. It should be equal. So this, this rail should be equal, okay? So, let's go to overhead, tilt you down so you can see what I'm doing. Higher voltage, lower current. Yep, more efficient. High voltage, 5160s are significantly more expensive than 2209s. Yep. It, it, it comes down to what do you plan on using your machine for? You know, CNC machines? Yeah, makes a little bit more sense. 3D printers? Eh, unless you're like literally running your printer at the edge of its capabilities, 
you're you're not going to see much of a return uh, in the investment. So I have high voltage boards. I I have um, some high voltage boards. I might put one in here um, just to play with it, but I it's not part of my requirements for printers I'm building. It's not on my, okay, I'm building a printer. I need to have this like it is for some other things. Where did I, did I put the bag away or is the bag empty? Yeah, that's okay. So last one's going there. And M38s because everything uses M38s. Put M3 fives in here. Oopsie doodles. Here I am thinking, you know, bigger rail, bigger screw. Nope. Nope, nope. M3s. What about closed loop motors? Um, if you have your 3D printer tuned right and you have your profile and your slicer set up correctly, you should not skip steps. You should not be skipping steps if you have everything set up right in your printer. Um, if you are skipping steps, the most common reason is, uh, you know, the, the print's curling or something and you're, you're hitting it with the tool head, which usually if your print's at that point where it's failed to the point where it's causing your tool head to skip around, the print's failed at that point usually. Um, I can't remember the last time I've had a print fail um, or I, I've lost, like my tool head has lost steps and I've had a layer shift. Um, I did have one on the switch wire uh, when I was playing around with the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, and that's because um, for that one, what was it? it was my purge tower um, had a big warp to it or a blob had formed on it. Um, maybe then it would have saved the day, but usually not. Plus a lot of uh, closed loop steppers, you lose a lot of the features. They're, they're, they're usually pretty dumb steppers from what I've seen. Frankly, I don't think they're worth it on 3D printers for 95% of use cases. I think my wife's home. on the new you ever figure that one out nope i ran the print again and it was fine i don't know where the print went i think i threw it out i did a little bit of cleaning the other day but i re-sliced it with pretty much the same g-code and ran it again and it finished fine so either funky g-code or it just kind of randomly decided to skip Unconstitutional, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. Ad revenue from the YouTube pirate. Looking forward to the 350 kit in May, June. Yar. That's okay, I do it too. If you find a creator you like, become a member or support their Patreon. That's usually what I do. they'll get more money directly from you joining their one dollar a month patreon or youtube member than they'll make off ad revenue from you because last time i did the math it the thing is you can't even judge ad revenue because it varies some ads pay more than more but you're looking at like a fraction of a penny per view depending sometimes up to a penny per view I don't know if you, uh, Jeremy, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. You didn't ask anything. No doggo today. Um, if he's not in the room, he's being mopey. Because normally he'll come down and actually he'll he'll knock on the door. Like he comes and scratches on the door when he wants in. So, um, 
usually, if I'm the only one home, he just sits at the front door and mopes. Because mom is not home. Usually at night when he comes down here, it's because everyone's upstairs, like, moving around, and he's like, I want quiet. Watch it from work. Watch it from work. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I'm watching from work, too. Okay, there we go. Could 2208s be responsible for dimensional inaccuracies on a Delta printer? Nope, uh, that's the inherent flaw of Delta printers themselves. Um, yeah, you technically could have your, your driver or something funky with your drivers, but Delta printers have to compensate because um, it doesn't use straight movement. So like on, on you know, a, a Core XY printer, when you tell it to move one millimeter to the X, it moves one millimeter to the X, right? It, it's, it's the same no matter where the tool head is. With the Delta printer, the further away from the middle of the bed you get, the less accuracy you have. So you have to compensate for it in firmware so that it knows, you know, if I tell it to one step of movement is different depending on where you are in the bed. I think it's right at the base of the towers is where it's the the least accurate, if I'm not mistaken. Or it's between two towers at the very edge. Um, and then also the, the build volume's tapered because of kinematics. It, deltas are funky. They're cool to watch. Don't get me wrong, I have a delta. They're cool to watch in motion, but they have issues. Conlon, thank you for coming to remember. Okay, so we have the rail on, 15 millimeters from the edge, a little bit on its side. Put two M5s in, and then one M5 in the bottom. Two, one, two, one, two. And then we're putting them in in what orientation? Close to the edge. Okay. Sauce, ten dollars. Thank you. Appreciate it for the Sally Hansen Extreme Wear Fun, dude. I've had that. Uh, I've had that bottle for going on years now, and I'm still nowhere near through it. Okay, so T nut orientation. Put the ends on. Sleeve slightly loose because they're not going to be in the uh, exact position. So it's M five tens on the one side, M five sixteens on the other side, and then M five thirties with shim on the other other side. Overhead. So put that on. Oops, no, let me go away. Okay, so M516. So on this side, M516. Extreme! Yes. All the extreme. To the extreme. Extreme rock, rock the mic like a vandal. Okay, this side is M510s, which are M5-8s, M510, where the M5-10s? M5, M320s, M510s, where are you? M510s, there's the M510s. How much have you missed? Uh, we're almost done the gantry, maybe? bottom m530s with some um, m5 shim which i think i actually have shim in here if i'm 
not mistaken, there's actually shim in this kit. I could have sworn I saw some earlier. start throwing out these empty bags. No, I'll just use the precision spacers. Don't forget, um, it's coming up on 7 o'clock, which anytime after that I could be doing the draw for the uh, LDO Motors motor kit for V2.4. You don't have to use the kit for 2.4, you're getting seven good quality stepper motors from LDO Motors. So you can use them for whatever, but if you want a chance to win that, make sure you enter. Link in the description or pinned in chat. Um, open worldwide. So if you have not entered, do this now. Um, and yeah, because you're not all in the same part of the world. 7 p.m. for me is in 28 minutes. Use them for CNC. I might do that with the, um, the Robo CNC. I might throw some big chonky steppers on it and call it a day. Okay, so leave slightly loose. We have all that together check your work that looks like that I'm happy I am content make sure all the pulleys spin freely nothing's binding again you want to leave the screws that attach it loose for a moment here insert at an angle and silt okay so we got to flip this over okay. because you got to insert at an angle because of that joint and then you're gonna use two X bolt two bolts only on this side uh, and these are, what size bolts? M5, M316, so let me dig those out right now. M316, there we go. And then four on the other sides. Okay, so. Put it upside down. So just to make this a little bit easier, let me get something to raise it up. Oh, here we go. Ugh. Rail box. There we go. That works. Now, obviously, it's not going to be square right now. You're going to have to... Uh, Play around with it in a bit here to square it up but usually that comes with when you put it in the frame And I don't see a beep noise. Goes there. Goes there. Your name is your name. You can put whatever you want for name because I'm just taking your name and email and I'm giving that to Jason uh, after the two draws and he's going to handle giving out the winners. Personally, I don't need to know your real name or where you live or any of that other info. But Jason does because he's going to ship it to you. Okay, I've got... Did I grab M312s instead of M3? 
16s and 316. Those are M314s, those are M316s. There we go. So they're tight, but not like super duper tight. Because you're going to have to de-rack this and fiddle about with all that and whatnot. Okay, so we got that attached. Uh, V1 and V2 were not version numbers, but the printer model's lines. We renamed the V1 to Voron Trident to address the confusion this caused. Yes, because everyone thought that even though the V1.8 was newer than the V2.4, they thought that like it just confused people. So... It's like BMW with like M3 and M4. They're different cars. So V1 and V2 are different printers. Hey, we're putting this in now. Overview. So now we gotta put some carriages on. So I could take this. Oh, you are horribly racked. And you can go over here. You can chill right there. Come back to me, printer. Wonder what the new V2 will call? I think we're... I, I don't know if we're renaming V2. Because we renamed Trident to get rid of that, but now we don't need to worry about the mix-up anymore because there's only the one. Um, does this have a Hall Effect board? I can't remember. There's a screen. Does this use clicky switches or Hall Effect? I can't remember. This uses clicky switches. Okay, that's fine. So I don't need to use the Hall Effect stuff. So for those that don't know, uh, there's an optional board you can use for your X, Y, end stops um, that use Hall Effect um, for your X, Y, end stops. It's really cool because nothing touches and you never have to worry about it wearing out, but it, it's not really needed. Um, it's just a cool thing to have. So it's optional. Um, Will it make your printer print better? No. It won't. But if you want to, you can run it. Both of my V2s use it, but that's it. None of my other printers use it. Okay, so I got these locks right here. So if you are using Hall Effect, one of them has a... Uh, oh, now we get to the point where I got stuff everywhere. Great. You go over there. Um, if you are using Hall Effect, one of them uses a magnet. You don't need to worry about it, though. So we're going to put some M5 nuts inside of these. And because of my way they print, they don't stay in. Oh, no, they're falling out. So, oh, I'm attaching these right now. Okay, I see how this works. So actually, we don't need this <clears throat> yet. Merox, thank you for coming to member. Okay. So gantry still upside down. Uh, it's a lot easier than fighting with gravity. Okay, so it looks like we're putting our belt in, teeth down, and we're putting the block on, and then that. Oh, okay, I see how we're doing this. I see how we're doing this. So, I gotta get my belt out. Where is my belt? 
getting the belt. There is the that and that. Ooh, it's one length. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut this. Shoot. I have to say, looking back at some of your older content, I'm super impressed with everything you have done with the space. It looks fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, how long do these belts need to be again? <laughs> Can't remember. Now, technically, I could just cut it in half, and then cut it in half again, and then I'd be good. But, uh, Steve, do you remember how long the belt's gotta be for a 300? While I look for other printed parts that I need. One, two, three, four. That's what I'm probably gonna do. I'm just gonna cut it into quarters and tidy it. Call it a day. Probably the easiest way to do it. M530. And M330. So there's M330. M530. There's a table on that page. Oh, there we go. Oop, I can't read. Minimum recommended belt length cuts. 300 spec. 1100 millimeters. Awesome! What is that in inches? Because I don't have millimeters that long. Cool. Two inches. That is approximately 43.3 inches. Okay, so um, that's a 28 millimeter. Do I got a tape measure? I got a tape measure. Where's my tape measure? I got a tape measure. Is it at 9mm? Yeah, it's 9mm. This is for Z. These are the Z belts. Not the XY belts. These are the, the Z belts, which are 9mm. No idea I belted it. Okay, well, I'm cutting it to um, 44 inches. So. Hopefully, I don't get burned. So it's saying, what is it? 1100 millimeters, which is 43. So we're gonna round up, go to 44, just to be safe. Colombian bananas. How do I connect Clipper to Prusa slicer? Um, I've never actually connected printer slicers to printers. I just saved the G code file and upload and print. I like my files being saved on the printers, but that's just me. Okay, you're going on the ground and I'm gonna get everything covered in dog hair. One, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. R2 means revision 2. It's an update. Just to double check that I didn't come short. 44 inches. Yep. Oh no, my kniff. Okay, so turn this around. So the belt goes towards the inside of the printer. Head view. That goes in there. That goes like so. This goes like this. Belt goes towards the inside of the printer. 
Actually, I could put that M5 30 through so I don't mix it up. Back out so you can see a bit. Up so you can see a bit. There we go. Okay, so. Don't get that stuck in there yet. So M5 nut in there. That goes on top. That goes through to keep everything from moving. Make sure your screws are lined up, or your T-nuts are lined up at this point. Okay. So belt, teeth down. Over top, and then screw them together. With the right size Allen key, if you got it. Okay, so we've just put the belt in, coming in towards the inside of the printer, teeth down, put that cover plate on, put that on, make sure you got that M5 nut stashed in there already and the m5 should be facing on the side that you have like the open extrusion you should see the m5 and then i gotta put that all four of them on i am absolutely starving right now Okay, so let's do the other ones. Uh, the manual isn't fully out yet. Um, everything should be out by within a week, hopefully. It's Zebra. Why are y'all talking about the letter Z? So once we get this gantry in, we're doing the draw, by the way. So if you have not entered the draw to win some LDO motors from LDO Motors, make sure you're entered. Link in the description, link pinned in chat. Same draw. Okay, I was going to order my Mic 6 from McMaster. I saw they sell 12 by 12, 18 by 8, and 24 by 24, which got me thinking, what if I went bigger than 14 inch 24? Don't. Uh, Voron is not designed to scale to that size, especially with all the printed parts for like XY joints and whatnot, um, and 2020 extrusions. Uh, if you want to go big with Core XY, personally, I don't recommend it. Core XY is a fast motion system, um, and the bigger you go, the slower you have to go. Um, especially with how long the belt runs get for XY on a Core XY printer. Um, so if you want to go to like 24 inches, I don't recommend doing Core XY. I recommend another motion system that can handle um, the downsides of large motion better. Like even like Cartesian. I think Crow XY, the cross uh, gantry, scales better, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I've never actually looked into it yet. 
Because most of the ones I see are super small and they're like little speed demon machines. Because gotta go fast is the cool thing in 3D printing apparently nowadays. Name, you can just put your name. All I need is your name and your email because I'm just going to forward your name and email to uh, Jason from LDO and he's going to email you to collect all your shipping information. So you could put, you know, whatever the heck you want to be called in there. Because I don't need to know where you live. I don't want to know what your name is. But I still think you're cool. But of course, nobody's cooler than those that like the smash button. Make sure you do that. Yeah, Crocs Y machine is kind of like something I want to dabble with, but we'll see. I've got enough on my plate for the next little while. 10 winner? <laughs> Two winner. Two. Ah, ah, ah. And then afterwards, Food. Ah, ah, ah. Favorite channel so far. That's good to hear. Appreciate that. Uh, Pretty prawn, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate that for the sexy beard. I gotta clean it up. I think I need to get it trimmed. It's starting to get a little wily. Okay, so the next part is to hang it in the gantry. So you know what? I think we're gonna pause it here. Um, next stream, we'll put it up in the printer. We'll attach our blocks, or you know what, screw it. I don't wanna deal with enough. I've already got enough stuff floating around because I'm doing two builds at the same time. So, uh, we're just going to power through it. But to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to enjoy some, uh, what is this? Czechoslovakian toffee. Okay, so it says put the gantry in, then put the blocks on. I'm going to put the blocks on first, just to uh, save a little bit of a step here. So it says put your gantry in, hang it with some zip ties, and then it put the blocks on. I'm going to put the blocks in right now, and then put the uh, gantry in. And these use M320s. Giveaway. The giveaway will be once I get the gantry in the printer. reason their blocks are pivot points. It allows the gantry to actually pivot when you're uh, squaring everything up. That's why they have a rounded surface. They actually act like pretty much a ball joint.
And also you need to stack up all these different parts because you need to get the belt in there too. Which I will say, this is actually the first time I've built this according to the manual. Normally I build the gantry in the frame. I don't build it separate and then kind of stick it in here. No Loctite? Does it call for Loctite? If it doesn't call for Loctite, don't use Loctite. Loctite can actually damage plastic parts, like printed parts. It'll degrade them. Um, so you really want to avoid using Loctite around printed parts. Tony, good evening. Uh, when I deactivate my XY steppers, my gantry sags, it depends how much weight, how big your printer is. Um, with the motors off, technically there's nothing holding them up, so they, they can sag. That That is something that can happen. That's why the first thing you do on startup before you print is run a gantry homing or a gantry tramming routine. Should have seen back in the back. Right now we have five to one gearing on the uh, the Z drives times four. So as long as you got beefy enough steppers, your gantry shouldn't drop more than a step or two. If it's dropping a lot, either your gantry is really heavy or your motors might be a little weak. Um, but regardless, it doesn't actually affect anything because you're gonna run a tramming motion uh, before you print anyways. And then the motors never turn off after that until the print's done or it goes to standby. So. You don't have to worry about if it sags, because it won't sag during a print. Back in ye olde days of V2.0, we only used 2 to 1 gearing, and your gantry dropped uh, when you ended a print, or you uh, turned the motors off. It wouldn't drop right down, but the back would noticeably tilt down. Oh, the blocks that attach? So, yeah, if, if you don't tighten those ones properly, they can come loose. What I've ended up doing, um, and I'll, I'll touch on it here when I get to that, but you're going to have four M5 bolts that come through these blocks that I'm putting on now and attach to the gantry. Um, I normally leave them a little bit loose, build the printer up for the first time, run a gantry tram, tram out the gantry, make sure it's really good, and then I tighten them. And then, on paper, it shouldn't move after that. Okay. So we got that. M540s. So let me get some M540s ready here. And zip ties. Is it doing the thing where it's telling people are becoming members when they're not? One second here. Uh, refresh cache. There we go. Uh, back to work. Take care, John. So, tip. Um, to make things a little bit easier. Use a dip. Yeah, English. Um, use some zip ties to hold your gantry up. So, if you don't have really long zip ties, um, use two zip ties time together use the rubber stops I could that is a common tip let's try that let's try it somebody's saying use the stops so we're gonna use the stops Oh, I can't because one of my stops is in a different location. Dang it. Or one of my rails is backwards in the rest. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, maybe two. 
pie. So that's going to be there, which is there, which ain't going to work, but close enough. Okay, so what you could use is zip ties to hold your gantry up, or we're going to try using these rubber stops here to prevent, um, so we can just rest the gantry on it and then bolt it up. So, there we go. Now, according to the manual, we should be able to pivot it into position. So, use CD cases. Yeah, you, you technically could use CD cases or um, uh, boxes of filament. You can use anything, really. So let's try this. Yeah, see, this is why. There we go. And then you would zip tie it. But um, since we got those stoppers, we're just going to roll with those. So M540. Basically, I go till it's tight and then I back it off half a turn for now. I let my little brother. Yeah, this. There are times when building this printer, having a helper makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so again, if you have not entered yet the draw, you're running out of time because we're uh, we're fast approaching the time of the draw. Link in the description and in chat. It's pinned. Go. So I'll belt it up tomorrow because we're doing this again tomorrow night. There we go. It's starting to look like a printer. Down, around, and up, and up. Easy peasy. So, what time is it now? 7.04. You have um, until 7.10 to enter if you have not entered the draw. So, you're running out of time if you have not entered for the draw. Clean this up here. Oh yeah, plenty of velvet. How do we enter? Link in the description and pinned in chat. Give me a name. I don't care if you use a real name or your YouTube name and your um, email address and then Jason will contact you to get all your shipping info because I don't want to know where you live I don't need to clean up too well because we're gonna be back down here tomorrow uh, one kick closer to the edge thank you for coming a member where are we at right now how many people have entered 824 we have 824 people entered but only 476 viewers currently and only 536 likes. You know what? If if those likes increase by a good number, we'll do two draws. So make sure you like that smash button. We'll do two draws today. And I probably got a million notifications. So let me check it. Oh, apparently ModBot's watching me while doing cardio. Hello. Push it to the limit. Run.
You find a missing part? Nope, I just ended up reprinting it. I looked all over for it. I have no idea where it went. Which, I printed, um, I, I was printing full plates of parts, right? So I printed a full plate and the one part warped a little bit. So I'm like, screw it. So on the next plate of parts, I printed it again. And then I took everything off that plate and then I slid it into the box. And it just, just it's just done disapparated. I don't know. Real name so no one can cheat. Well, you can't enter twice. It's per Google account. Like if you if you really want to cheat on this kind of draw, like I can't really stop you. By the way, um, we'll do a poll. Actually, three minutes. Um, do you guys want motors or a frame next week? Or tomorrow, actually. Surprise tomorrow. Motor or frame? You want a V2 frame or you want motors for tomorrow's draw? Or it might be next week's draw. I got I got to double check with Jason. But he wants to do some small prizes on the streams during the build and then a giveaway of an entire V2 kit on the final stream. So if you want to, uh, for the next draw, if you want it to be motors or frame, we'll go with whatever the, uh, yeah, probably the frame. I figured it would be the frame. This one's for motors though. Want to try and kit. They're working on it. They said, uh, Jason said May, or no, June, July, I think. Yeah, this frame is awesome. I'm digging these colors. I'm really digging these colors. Wait. Oh, that camera froze. There we go. Yeah. Like, I am really digging those colors. It's like a nice, like, subdued, like, not, not bling, but it, it's got enough. I, I do like the accents are a, are a lighter shade of gray. It, it's actually coming out really good. And then the skirts, um, let me find the parts, will be... Like, they're gonna be like that. Can't really see, but I'm killing all the lighting there. Yeah. So they're gonna be gray skirts with the accent piece covering it. So basically, for the skirts, I did the opposite. So instead of the skirts being the main color, the skirts are the accent color, and what would normally be the accent color in the skirts is the main color because I only have uh, this much left of the red. <laughs> so I may end up having to hit up Sparta 3D and get another spool of cherry red, but it's cherry red Sparta 3D uh, Sparkle ABS Plus. And I'm running low on it and I'm hoping I have enough. I think I have enough. I still have to print all the uh, electronics bounce, um, which I'm probably gonna have to get started because we might be doing electronics tomorrow. Oh, I still got to build the whole tool head. Which I haven't printed any of the, the Clockwork 2 stuff. Which I gotta talk to Steve if uh, the boards on here are compatible with Clockwork 2 yet. I don't know. But, anyways, uh, we're gonna do a draw now. So, Wheel of Names. So, if you have not entered, you have until I lock this or until I copy all the names. Actually, lock it now. So, if you have not entered, three, two, one. Ooh, somebody got in at the very last second. Great. So whatever name you put, that's what's going to show up when I do the draw. And if for some reason two of you guys have the same name, it's going to go to the. It's going to be the email that all. Because two of you can't have the same email. Holy. Probably there's a lot of people. I gotta select everyone. It's 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 taking a moment here. Okay, so we have a total of 844 entrances. So let's see here.
Do I use any venting? Nope, I, uh... When I print ABS, I completely seal my printer up. Hopefully we didn't crash wheel of names. It, I did paste it. There we go. <laughs> okay. So. You know how we roll with this. It's been a while since I've done a giveaway. But. I need a number between 10 and 15. We'll do 10 and 15. Joran, you're disqualified. You jumped the gun. Need a number between 10 and 15. 10. Okay, that works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Spinning. Hey! Michael! Oh my god, how many Michaels? Hopefully we have more than one Michael. Shoot. Michael. 22 people are called Michael. We might have a problem here. <laughs> we might have a problem here. Because 22 people just put Michael. How, oh, shoot, I closed it. Uh, how, how is that spelled? M A M I C H A E L? <laughs> no last name. How did I spell Michael? It was M M I A. Okay, how many Michaels do we have? We got one person. Put Michael. Two people just put Michael. Three. Okay. So one second here. Let me make a new notepad here. A new notepad here. So I've got three people that just put Michael. So we're going to do a Michael off. Okay. So now I know in the future to specify, put more than just your first name. Because I don't want to search your, I can't spin your email addresses, which are individualized. So. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. One of the Michaels entered twice. One of the Michaels entered twice. Am I right here? Oh no, I just copy and pasted it twice. No, I'm just an idiot. There's two Michaels. It it wrapped around. So we have two Michaels. So how are we gonna decide between Michael and Michael? No, they didn't they didn't it, it's one Michael, it just it looped around, so I, I copied it twice. Same time. So it, it's it's two Michaels. So flip a coin. Or do we just do one and two? Let's just search one and two. One, two. So, I have two Michaels here. I've got a Michael with a custom email address. You are going to be Michael1. And then I got Michael with a Gmail address. You are email2. Or you're number two. So, this is going to decide who is the Michaelist Michael. Somebody give me a number between uh, six and nine. A number between six and nine, please. This will help determine the Michaelist Michael. And yes, and yes, I'm drawing this out. This is fun to me. Eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Like five of those didn't shuffle it, but okay. So again, one is custom email Michael. 
two is Gmail email Michael. And the Michaelist Michael is. Oh, 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 oh. Gmail email Michael. Congratulations, Gmail email Michael. You are the Michaelist Michael. And you have won an LDO Motors kit. Now we get to draw for the second one. Because <laughs> I've got two of these to give away. Because we've got two of these. <laughs> Close. So, let's do this again. Uh, somebody give me a number between one and five. One and five. Four. One, two, three, four. LDO Motors, Jason, 299, super chat. <laughs> Did you super chat? Or is it is, is chat just broken? I don't know. It's broken. Cool. Spinning. Hey. I did remove the one Michael, so it would have been the if 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 a single Michael had come up again, the other Michael would have won because I did remove the one Michael. So got real excited and disappointed. Ah, oh, it sucks. So you start reading left to right, you're like, oh, shine, uh, that ain't my last one. Okay, so uh, no third kit, no. Again, these were LDO motor uh, kits, so it's the actual motors. You get, a, you get a box like this. It's got four of the motors, four Voron V2.4. So six of them are the same, and then you have um, two or a single extrude motor, right? The six are the same. Hopefully they're the same. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Or no, they're not the same. Two are XY motors, which are 0.9 degree. But either way. Okay, so um, we're gonna end the stream there. I am absolutely starving. I need some food. Um, so I will see you tomorrow. We will belt in the gantry, de-rack it, build the tool head, um, we'll probably start on electronics, see how far we get. Um, yeah, Zen motors have sockets. I forgot about that, good point. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow afternoon, uh, 8 p.m. EST. So it's a little bit later in the day, uh, but that's my normal Saturday stream time. Um, actually, no, tomorrow. tomorrow's Minion. What am I thinking? Tomorrow's Minion Day. Tomorrow's a Minion Day build. That's right, V Minion tomorrow. Why am I thinking this? This will be Tuesday. Um, v Tuesday. What am I, I'm getting all loopy. I'm getting all loopy. So 8 p.m. tomorrow, V Minion, not V2. Why was I saying V2? V2 Tuesday. V Tuesday. And random Fridays, too. So... Uh, for those that donated to the stream or became members of the channel because of you guys, you help support the content I create and the things I do. I would not be able to do it without you, uh, but also everyone else. You're all awesome. Everyone who joined the chat, joined in, participated in the draw, or just, you know, sat there and watched because you had nothing else to do on a Friday night. You're all awesome. Uh, be safe out there. Wash your hands and cheers. Oh, shoot. I changed my buttons. <laughs>